Hi there and welcome to episode 10 of Animal Workshop where I build things in the workshop to help me film wildlife uh, out in the bush. Those of you who have seen a few episodes uh, will know that I've recently moved from Tasmania to the Northern Territory for work reasons and I'm fully settled in up here now and I'm, uh, I'm building things. Um, so in this episode I'm, uh, I'm looking at uh, woodland birds out in the monsoon forest and I'm, uh, I'm reporting on a CNC milling machine that I've uh, just built to replace the uh, knee mill and lathe that I had in Tasmania. And that's been a very interesting process uh, and it's all up and running now. It's pretty well compulsory to own a four-wheel drive in Darwin, so my little Suzuki Jiminy is going to be featuring quite a lot in forthcoming ep episodes. I first established this site in February of this year and uh, the forest, monsoon forest was wet then and there was blanket in mist and I was regularly out there with uh, in tropical downpours. But uh, now it's uh, early September and it's just so incredibly dry. It's just unbelievable. As a boy from you know, the Tasmanian forest where it's always wet, to see a forest so incredibly dry is... Uh, uh, I don't know whether it was, it's heartbreaking almost, but this is the way it is up here. These forests uh, go from you know, more water than you can poke a stick out to, uh, to just so tinder dry. And being September, it may not rain properly for another another three months till, till December, so um, there's still a lot to come, and it's really hard for me to understand how this forest can survive, but it does, and it's uh, in, it just absolutely full of life, of birds and animals and noise. It's a... Uh, the monsoon forests are really a fantastic place to be. My interest in the birds is really being out in the bush and I do love the birds and the animals but uh, identification is not big for me. It's not, <laughs> I have a bit of trouble with identification. I think these are crimson finches but I'm not sure. They may be immature. Things are much easier in Tasmania too. We have one kingfisher for instance down there where the Northern Territory has four different species so for someone of my brain capacity it all gets very very confusing after a while. Just to describe how I uh, got these shots, I have a, a permanent water supply set up in a, a tray um, which I've left there. I try to keep water in it although um, it's only in the last four weeks which I can guarantee water every day so the birds get used to it and come down. It's been set up now that the installation itself has been set up for about um, oh, eight months almost uh, so they can get used to it. Uh, I'm not getting a lot of the birds though. A lot of the birds, you know, the um, uh, other honey eaters and drongos and there's a whole fire bird still up in the tops of the trees which aren't coming down and I'd really like to sort of work out a way to get them to come down. It, well, I've, I've got it set up on the ground and I think that might be the problem. I'm going to sort of, uh, I'm going to elevate it so it's up off the ground. There's lots of things that eat, eat birds and things on the ground here so um, that might be the issue. I have a hide set up. It's not a permanent hide. I build it every day out of, a, out of a army camouflage. I'm about two and a half metres away. Uh, and I'm filming this with a, a 7D with a 300mm um, uh, 
plus um, converter, 1.4 converter, which gives me about um, an equivalent of about 800 mil, something around that. It's in a form of video, I've worked that out. So um, that's what I'm doing. I sit there for about each session is about four or five hours in the hide. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a slow process and you need a lot of patience. Okay, it's enough of the birds, it's into the workshop. I Google everything and uh, <laughs> that's the wonders of the internet. Uh, everything you need to know is on the internet and most of the information I've gained on the internet uh, for this CNC machine and most of the uh, the stuff for it I've also bought over eBay so this is a product of the internet. Um, what I've tried to do here is to build a, a machine that's heavy enough and big enough to sort of cut aluminium to a certain speed. Um, it's a similar dimension to the knee mill I had so X is about a metre, it's by about 4, 430 in the, in the Y and the Z is about um, 330 so it's got a fair cut on it. Um, everything's been, uh, I've welded it all up myself. The, the only thing outsourced are the, um, the laser cut ends and, and they came incredibly accurate. Um, I'm really amazed at what the, uh, the laser cutters did. The um, one bit of uh, knowledge I'll pass on is getting things done on a laser cutter. Uh, if you're building a steel mill, it just makes everything so more accurate, and uh, that's very important when you're building a, um, a CNC machine with rails and uh, uh, that have to run parallel. So I've geared the um, the step motors down one to six, and I've done this so I, I want to get it as working as accurately as I possibly can to the, the, the smallest um, dimensions. Uh, it's a bit hard to know exactly how accurate it is because I can only measure to what I can measure to, but I know I'm getting an accuracy of at least. Um, 0.01 um, I'm getting that, that fairly safely and I suspect I'm getting a bit more than that uh, but again you know you can't measure what you can't measure part of my uh, muddle headed thinking is that most of my work would be spent on the hardware and that's actually quite wrong um, the hardware or for me anyway came together fairly simply um, all the problems I had was with the uh, the software uh, not even the electronics putting the electronics together I got it working straight away it's it's getting the uh, computer and Mac 3 and um, and I use Bobcad cam um, to do the design work is to getting that all work together and then getting the speeds and feeds work out. That's actually where I spent most of my time. Building the machine, uh, apart from waiting for things to turn up, was, was relatively simple. So what I'm, what I'm doing here is this, this is cutting a square hole. This is a 4mm uh, bit and the, the hole is 6.5 by 6.5. So um, it cuts out a little bit at a time and goes in sort of a square fashion. It's something you really can't do by hand. So I've got a, a 1mm diameter bit operating here. Um, I started being far too careful with these bits and I, uh, now I've worked out the speeds and the feeds. I've got it travelling at a much higher uh, um, uh, speed. Uh, it's turning very quick at high speed at about uh, 18,000 revs a minute. So, uh, So the first thing I'm having a go at making is just a little uh, credit card size torch. Um, for the only reason is that it sort of involves a whole lot of different functions and I can get used to it. So the six holes there are where the little Korea LEDs uh, sit and the slot along the bottom is the um, uh, where the batteries go. I've still got to put a, a switch in it and build a carbon fibre little back for it. Um, uh, but you know, to start off, it took about six hours to cut this, and as I, as I refined the tool paths um, and got used to the speeds and feeds, so I'm getting it down to about an hour and a half now, and I could probably get down to about um, 50 minutes, I reckon. Uh, the spindle motor is an air cooled 2.2 kilowatt, and it's an eBay one from China, along with the um, 
the variable speed drive. They both work fine, uh, but um, they lack, <laughs> lack a lot of instructions, so you've got to work a lot of that out yourself. Um, the unit itself works on Mac 3, which most of these CNC home-built computers, uh, CNC units do. Um, I've used the uh, UC100 USB connector into a laptop. Now that seems to work fine. It has dropped out a couple of times and I've had to reboot the computer um, but, but uh, generally look it's fine. I, I think it's a, it's a good uh, compromise and, and uh, 32 parallel points are, um, aren't that common these days.